In this video, we will style the form component, making sure that we have the validation. If we enter some email, we have the loading state and then also the successful message. Okay, so in this video, we will prepare it on our side, just the static component elements. And then in the next video, we will do the functionality to show and hide it, manage the state and do all the dynamic stuff. Let's go back to the code and just under the coming soon badge, we want to include a form and instead of including it into the hero component, we will create a separate component called it sign up form. We'll set the title to just the title of the form, whatever we want to include, I'm copy pasting from the notes. And now we will import it at the top. We are importing it before we creating it. So we sort of going from the other end, we could easily first create a component, then import it, then use it. We're going from the other end. So hopefully that makes sense. Now we create signupform.js and inside of it, just to speed it up, I'm uh, copy pasting again. It is a simple markup with some basic styling of the form. And now we'll just talk through it. So here is the title that shows above the form. Then we have an input and a button and everything is wrapped in a one div. Okay, so very simple markup. Couple of classes to make it style nicely. And if we save both files, we see the form under the coming soon badge. We have the nice ring when we focus inside of the input. Now let's break it down. So here is the title. Form has the max width small. If we remove it, it would stretch all the way. So we want to restrict the width, making sure it's not too long. That's why there is the max width small. Let's revert that back. The container of both fields has the focus within, which does the nice outline. And that's thanks to the focus within class. It's very handy utility class from Tailwind. Let's search for focus within. And it lets you highlight the parent container if anything inside of is in focus. Okay, so that's why we have the focus within. On the input itself, we've got focus outline none. Just to get rid of the border, by default, there would be outline on the input. We don't want that. We want to show the whole container outlined. That's why we have focus outline none on the input. And the button, simple styles, and the flex shrink zero, making sure that the button doesn't change. The width, it base, it's based on the content itself. And then the input next to it is expanding or shrinking to fill the rest of the space. Okay, so that's the markup for the form. And then we using it inside of the hero component. While we inside of the hero, let's also fix the scaling of the image. You see how it's squashed. We want to make sure it's proportion are nice. And for that, we will give the image object contain. Then it would always show it nicely without the distortion. That's perfect. Now we can include the error message. So if the form will be invalid, we want to show a red text underneath. And for that, again, we will create a component called error message and use it, use it at the bottom of the form under the input. We want to print custom message and the error message component would be a simple arrow function. Again, I'm copy pasting because we've already covered all of this and it's quite basic. We've already covered a lot of these classes. So unless there is some new class that we haven't covered, I'll be speeding up with these snippets that you can find under the video as well. If we save it, we'll see, please enter valid email under the form. And now we can add the success message as well. Let's paste it under the error message. Simple text with a red or green color or green text with green background. And now we can print the success message above the form because we will want to show it when the form is successfully submitted. So we'll show the success message or the form. So we won't be showing both at the same time. 
here it is text inside of the green green batch or green notification for the loading state we will keep track of is loading value and then based on that we will change the text and gray out and make these two buttons unclickable and for that we will use something called class names that will help us to make conditional classes for Tailwind in, in a nice modular way. So install npm install class names. We will use that to create the objects for our classes. Then we'll start the server again. Now we can import the class names inside of the sign up form component and create the conditional classes inside of the component itself. Okay, so we'll simplify a little bit of the return statement once we created these classes. But firstly, let's create a new variable, call it is loading. And for now, we will hard code the value to true. We just want the UI to start the UI before we do the request. So this will be managed later on dynamically. For now, we hard coded it. And now we can create the class name objects for these three elements. Okay, so firstly, grab everything inside of the class name of the form wrapper and we'll create a new constant we'll call it form class and we'll use the class names so we'll use the imported class names make sure it has the s at the end and inside of that we'll define an object and the first value will be the original class and we'll use it like this with the true which means that the form class will be true all the time so if we use it we should see no change in the ui for now so these are the default classes but then we want to have another object or another class name and this will be the conditional one where we want to change the background to be gray 100 and we'll also change the border to gray 100 as well so this will sort of fade it out make it unusable while the process is loading. So when the loading is true, these two classes will be added on top of these sets of classes. Okay, so form class is now conditional and or these two classes are conditional only if the is loading is set to true. And if I save it, we see there's a gray background on the whole component. And if you make it more obvious, let's make it red 600 okay so now this is conditional if this is false we won't see it and we'll see the default behavior okay so that's how we are conditionally creating classes for the form now we'll do the same thing for the input and the button now we will reuse this and create a new constant called input class Again, this will be the default value that will be always printed. And the next one will be the is disabled or is loading. And we want to disable the input. Okay, so for that, we will make it a little bit transparent. So we'll set the opacity to 50. And we'll disable, we'll show a disabled cursor. Okay, so cursor not allowed. And these are two new things. So let's search for the cursor inside of the docs. Here are all the options. So cursor not allowed is used for inputs when they disabled. Okay, so while it's loading, we want to make sure that the input is showing the user that he shouldn't interact with it. And opacity will make it 50% opaque. One disadvantage when you're working with these class names is that you don't get the auto completion. So it's good to actually create these classes first inside of the HTML tags and then copy the resulting classes in here. I already know what I'm trying to achieve, copy pasting from my notes, but so you're just aware that you can't expect here to get the auto completion from Tailwind. Now we can use the input class on the input. We see the nice cursor and the input is faded out slightly and we can do the same thing for the button it would be actually good if you try it on your own 
just so you know how to work with class names. So try it on your own. I'm copying the default colors or default classes, create a new constant, call it btn class. That's the default value. And we want to, when it's, when it's loading, we want to again, opaque it, make it, make it a little bit more invisible, fade it out a little bit. And same with the cursor. Okay. We want to make sure when they hovering over, when they try to click second time, we want to disable it. But for the button itself, we really want to disable it. We don't want to just show the cursor and make it still interactive. And for that, we will specify the disabled attribute and set it to true. If the is loading is true, and we'll do the same thing on the input. Okay. So we will disable them, not just visually, but also functionality wise, both the button and the input will be disabled when the is loading is set to true and opacity 50. So let's see how this works. So now it's disabled and the user can interact with the input or button. Okay. The one more last thing we'll do is change the text when we are loading. So we don't want to show sign up all the time. It's conditional. So if, if it's loading, then we want to show something else. Otherwise we'll show the sign up. And if it's loading, we'll say processing. Okay, so that's the text change. If we're loading, we're showing processing. If we set the loading to false, we should see the default interactive form elements. Okay, so this wraps it up. We've done quite a lot in this video, but in terms of functionality, it's still quite simple. That's why I've used the snippets. So we are including new signup form element or component inside of the hero. Inside of it, we are bringing class names to create dynamic classes. We have two small components, one for successful message, one for error message. And then based on the is loading value, we are creating conditional classes for the wrapper, the input class and the button class as well. Okay. Then we're reusing them and we also disabling both the input and the button when we are making the request. So now the UI is ready for us to start implementing the functionality. Mm -hmm.